It's a pleasure and honor to be here. I'll talk about regulation from a developmental perspective. Regulation is a construct that, that is a key construct in a systems model of the world. It defines how components of a system organize to accomplish life's function. I'll describe three lines in the development of regulation, that of the organism or self-regulation, that of the organism context exchange or synchrony, and the evolutionary timeline. I'll then use data from several longitudinal birth cohorts to detail the development of both self-regulation and synchrony, and use research on the parental brain to show how the three lines in the development of regulation converge. If I have a moment, I'd like to end by discussing the philosophical implications of the finding to the core question in neuroscience, that of the mind-brain polarity and the subjectivity gap. Let me begin with a poem by Wallace Stevens. In the punctual center of all circles, white stands truly. The circles nearest to it share its color, but less as they recede, impinged by difference and then by definition, as a tone defines itself and separates. And the circles quicken and crystal colors come and flare and bloom with his vast accumulation, stands and regards and repeats the primitive line. As the biological sciences became the lens to comprehend the universe, humans no longer saw the world as representing hierarchical order or incremental progress for which a line would be the most fitted metaphor, to understanding the world in terms of systems for which the circle would be the most suited symbol. Systems or circles have several important features. They're not infinite, but self-contained. They grow from the core outward. They follow a finite set of rules and execute a predetermined series of programs, which, given adequate tools, can be studied already in their most embryonic forms. Systems, therefore, contain a sensitive period by definition and must include a developmental perspective, how color from the context mixes in with the white and how the complex is superimposed upon the simple. Now, if system is the way we see the world and regulation is the operating mechanism of systems, the question is, can research on regulation shed further light on the three questions that guided human search for knowledge since antiquity, and every generation drafts a somewhat different answer to them. How the physical integrates with the mental, what it means to be human, and what is the life worth living. The three lines in the development of regulation, that of the organism maturation, that of the organism fittedness to the social ecology, and the evolutionary line that guided this process are interrelated and supported to some extent by the ancient oxytocin molecule. The oxytocin molecule evolved from an ancestral peptide via gene duplication in jawed fish approximately 600 million years ago uh, and is found in all vertebrate and some invertebrate species. The oxytocin system provides a very interesting example for the mutual influences between self-regulation and social synchrony. Across all species, from nematodes to humans, uh, oxytocin is implicated in the regulation of basic life function, such as thermoregulation, water balance, energy conservation, or gustatory function. However, within each species, those functions have been repurposed in the service of social life. And oxytocin became critically involved in social functions, such as parent-infant attachment, peer bonding, or social collaboration, in ways that support the social organization of that species. Interestingly, one of the most conserved expression of the oxytocin molecule due to its pulsatile release is repetitive rhythmic motifs of behavior. These are found in all species, from the courting dance of nematodes to the repetitive rhythmic synchronous interactions between human mothers and their infants. In several longitudinal studies, we try to detail the development of self-regulation from birth to adolescence. In the newborn period, regulation is expressed primarily in physiological support system. Uh, it implies a more balanced function of physiological systems that oscillate between on and off, such as heart rate variability or sleep-wake cyclicity, and state regulation that enables orientation to the world. Uh, in the first year of life, we exposed infants to paradigm that elicits stress. 
Emotion regulation implies the infant's ability to acquire a regulatory repertoire, maintain balance in the face of stress, and return to baseline following per perturbation. In the second year of life, attention regulation kicks in. Infants are able to maintain focus on task, use goal-directed attention, and tolerate the frustration inherent in learning. At five to six years, we see early self-regulation, early self-concept, emerging morality, and self-restraint. Those give rise to a host of regulatory outcome at 14 years. Empathy, executive functions, the ability to manage stress and dialogue conflict, and lower behavior problems and accident proneness. We then wanted to say the mechanism that account for this continuity and found two types of mechanism. First, step-by-step -step continuity be between one, st one stage and the next, uh, implying that regulation evolves as the gradual acquisition of more complex skills uh, superimposed upon the old ones. However, above and beyond, we also found direct continuity from physiological regulation at birth to outcome at 14 years. This is very much consistent with dynamic system theory, which suggests that minor uh, variation in initial conditions are enhanced through repeated iteration, the famous butterfly effect. The second line in the development of regulation is that, is that of social synchrony. Biobehavioral synchrony is defined as the coordination of biology and behavior between affiliated members during social contact. It was coined about 100 years ago by the early entomologists in a, when they tried to describe collaboration among a group of ants. In humans, uh, coordination of behavior in the gaze, affect, vocal, of and touch modalities provide a template for the coordination of physiological systems between two humans. We found that during moments of mother-infant interactive synchrony, there is also coupling of maternal and infant heart rhythm, coordinated release of oxytocin, and brain-to-brain -brain synchrony in alpha rhythms across the social brain. Here is the timeline of uh, synchrony. This is our longest longitudinal study, actually my PhD research. Uh, this is Maya. Besides, the last picture is not her. She'll be coming in in a few months. And as you could see, the sensitive period in the development of synchrony is between birth and nine months, before social communication becomes centered on a verbal exchange. Then later on, abilities, uh, the, with the development of symbolic, narrative, and cognitive abilities, those abilities become superimposed on the nonverbal dialogue. And as to the rings of synchrony, we see that in the newborn stage, there is the parent expression of the species-specific human behavior in the gaze, affect, vocal, and touch modality. Uh, in the first year of life, these modalities become coordinated between parent and child. Uh, in the second year, parent and children start to get engaged in joint symbolic activity, which gain complexity and elaboration during the preschool years. Interestingly, those ability predicted the same amount, the same regulatory outcome at 14 years, and using the same mechanism. We found both step-by-step -step continuity in the development of synchrony, as well as direct continuity from synchrony during the sensitive period to outcome at 14 years. This lead us to question whether self-regulation and co-regulation of synchrony are really that distinct, or perhaps just like the uh, particle wave uh, duality of the uncertainty principle, the difference represent more the uh, researcher's point of view than a uh, true schism. To test this hypothesis, we followed 127 parents and infants at seven time point from birth to 10 years, at birth 3, 6, 12, 24, uh, months, five years, at 10 years. At birth, we measured physiological regulation by Vagelton and the Brazelton exam. At each uh, time point between three months and five years, uh, we observed and microcoded both self-regulation and parent-infant synchrony. And there were four regulatory outcomes at 10 years. Empathy, measured by dialogue and a lab paradigm, behavior problems, uh, maternal interview on child accident proneness, and vagal tone in response to stress. It was a tape of inter-adult anger. 
uh, we found the two mechanisms I just described, continuity, step-by-step -step continuity in both self-regulation and synchrony leading from birth to 10 years. But we also found a mediated path related to the cross-time effect of self-regulation and synchrony and vice versa. So that better self-regulation at one time point predicted better synchrony at the next time point, which led to higher self-regulation at the third time point and vice versa. And this mediated path of cross-time effect of self-regulation and synchrony uh, and vice versa mediated the link between initial physiological condition and regulatory outcome a, day, a decade later. Well, now that we saw that self-regulation and synchrony are interrelated, research on the parental brain shows that they're also integrated with the evolutionary timeline. Uh, interest in the neurobiology of parental care is a century old, but only the la in the last decade, researchers began to image the human parental brain. fMRI studies of parents' brain response to their infant's cues, typically cries, pictures, or sound, show several areas of activation which cohere into a global human parental caregiving network that consists of several interrelated networks. The first more consistently found network is a subcortical network that has been shown in rodent studied, studies to be critical for the expression of maternal care in female rodents. This includes the oxytocin-producing hypothalamus, the amygdala, and the subcortical dopamine reward circuit, both the uh, mesolimbic and nigrostriato. However, unlike female rodents, in human, the ancient mammalian caregiving system is connected via multiple ascending and descending projector, projection to several cortical structures that are superimposed upon the ancient subcortical network. This includes the empathy network that enable parents to resonate with their infants' pain and feeling, uh, the mirror network that enable parents to represent infant action in their own brain, the mentalizing network that enable uh, parents to understand the infant nonverbal intention, and the latest evolving emotion regulation network that enable multitasking, inhibition, and long-term planning. The fact that those multiple cortical structures are superimposed upon the ancient mammalian caregiving network gives rise to the hypothesis that perhaps those structures evolved in Homo sapiens in the context of parental care, which is obviously the most evolutionary salient context of survival. We next wanted to see how synchrony is implemented in the parental brain. We visited the home of 45 mothers. This is a study by Shira Tzil, and videotaped mother-infant interaction, microcoded it for synchrony, and used the interaction as the fMRI stimuli. We differentiated between two groups of mothers, synchronous mothers who uh, provide maternal behavior in accordance with the infant social signals and intrusive mothers who overstimulate the infant and disregard the infant signal for rest. A whole brain analysis showed only two areas that had differences between these two groups, and both load on the ancient mammalian caregiving networks. Uh, intrusive mothers had higher amygdala activation, and synchronous mothers had higher nucleus accumbens ac activation, a key structure in the dopamine reward system. We then wanted to see how these two subcortical structure functionally coupled with the cortical structure across the viewing of the interaction. So we used these two subcortical structures as key. We found that for the Synchronous mothers, nucleus accumbens activation was functionally coupled with areas in the mentalizing and empathy network. However, for the intrusive mothers, amygdala activation was functionally coupled with sensory motor areas. So it appears that synchrony is implemented in the brain by an underlying reward coloring which is functionally connected with cortical structures that enable uh, parents to resonate online with their infant need and understand his intentions. 
In the final study that I'll present, it's a longitudinal study by Ayala Vaham, we wanted to see how the regulation of the parent brain via parent child synchrony leads to the child emotion regulation outside the parenting context. So the regulation of one human via co-regulation between two humans lead to the regulation in a developing human. So we uh, recruited the 91 first time parents and we used the same uh, procedure I, previous, uh, I just described, uh, visited the home, filmed interaction, coded for synchrony and used the interaction as fMRI stimuli. Uh, in this study, we were interested not only in level of activation, but also in network coherence. How structures within each network combined together to achieve life's function. Uh, at three years of age, we, sorry, we uh, visited the home again, and we uh, assessed infants in three emotion regulation paradigm. Sorry, okay, something is wrong. Okay, let's try this. Uh, socialization was assessed with a toy pickup paradigm. The regulation of negative emotion was assessed with a scary mask paradigm. And the regulation of positive emotion was assessed with a uh, soap bubble play paradigm. And in these uh, paradigms, we coded both the expression of negative and positive emotions and the strategies to, uh, children use to regulate it. We found that uh, network coherence of the subcortical network, the ancient mammalian caregiving network, predicted the child's ability to regulate positive emotion. So children whose parents in infancy had greater coherence of the subcortical networks expressed more positive emotion and used interpersonal strategies to regulate the positive context. Coherence of the mirror empathy network predicted the regulation of negative emotions. Uh, those infants, those children whose parents had better coherence in infancy expressed less negative affect and used diversion strategy to regulate the negative context. And uh, coherence of the mentalizing network uh, predicted child socialization. These children had better regulation in the toy pickup paradigm. As to the mechanism, what we saw is parents whose brain was more regulated had more oxy higher level of oxytocin, expressed more synchrony, and this in turn predicted greater child regulation. The mechanism we didn't see is brain-to-brain -brain synchrony, which we think was likely in action here, so that more regulated parental brain via brain-to-brain -brain synchrony mechanism that are yet to be discovered uh, help shape a more regulated child brain. So to summarize, this is how we think the human parental brain sets in motion the cross-generation transmission of self-regulation and socialization. In the newborn period, the human parental brain shapes and is shaped by physical contact, breastfeeding, and investment. In the infant period, the human parental brain shapes and is shaped by oxytocin and synchrony. We know that these factors all predict better uh, emotion regulation and socialization in the childhood and adolescent years. In adult, we know from uh, retrospective studies, not yet prospective studies, that the human parental brain is associated with better memories of parental care in childhood and with oxytocin, which was shaped in the first week of life. So the human parental brain, which is the apex of the evolution process, not only builds more uh, self-regulated and socialized adult, it also sensitizes the adult brain to the most important function of evolutionary adaptation, the successful rearing of infants to become collaborative members of the human family. I don't have time to go into the philosophical implication. Let me just say that the subjectivity gap touches upon the question of whether what we learn about the human brain has any meaning to the human mind. And what I would like to suggest that perhaps this theoretical framework of biobehavioral synchrony, 
where we shift the focus from one brain activation to two brain coordination may begin to chart the terrain and formulate the language to what uh, Gerald Edelman called uh, brain-based epistemology, a field that addresses both the human brain and the human mind. Uh, I'd like to thank my student who carried out these studies and thank our funding agency and thank you for listening.